the main uh, first session of the main business meeting of the World Science Fiction Society at the 81st World Con is called to order. Yes. Parliamentary inquiry. Sure. Uh, that microphone. Yeah. Uh, say your name and. Uh, parliamentary inquiry. You asked the budget. Uh, I just wanted to ask what is the procedure to ask for a motion to delay the discussion of uh, 7, 8, and 9 to tomorrow, as I will not be able here to, to be here today uh, to defend or present any of it. Um, you can just make a motion to do that. Uh, can I make yep. a motion, please, yep. to delay the discussion of F7, 8, and 9 okay. to tomorrow? Yesterday, uh, items F7 and 8 on your agenda were referred to uh, one committee, and F9 was referred to a, another committee. Um, so there's uh, most days committees were told to report back to the main business meeting, and uh, the motion has been made to postpone those items until uh, the business meeting tomorrow. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion uh, in favor of or against moving those uh, committee reports till tomorrow's business meeting? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of moving the reports till tomorrow, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your hand. The ayes have it, and those agenda items are postponed until tomorrow's meeting. This meeting today is the first session of the main business meeting. Uh, there is a second one scheduled tomorrow at uh, which site selection business is the primary uh, item of business. And then, if necessary, there may be a third session, a third session of the main business meeting on Sunday morning. Uh, I'd like to ask the uh, officers at the front table to introduce themselves, starting on the right. Oh, you start. Hello. Uh, that didn't work. I, I can't hear the voice. Interpreter cannot hear. Oh, try now. Try now. Try, try this. Okay. Try now. Oh, much better. Uh, 麻烦各位在发言之前，请先报上自己的名字，呃，以及自己的头衔。呃，Please uh, just mention your name and your titles, uh, before you make your speech. Thank you for your cooperation. 谢谢合作。啊，我是。本次大会的中方秘书王毅阳,以及这边的是我们的现场监督姚雪。I am the Chinese secretary of this business meeting, and we also have the floor manager Yaoxue there. Thank you. I'm Anne-Marie Rudolph, I'm the English language secretary for the meeting. Donald, I, I, I am Donald Eastlake, the uh, presiding officer. I'm Kevin Stanley. I'm the deputy presiding officer, which means that I will preside over the meeting if the uh, presiding officer has to recuse himself uh, from presiding for various reasons, and that will happen. I also, however, am the meeting's videographer and therefore will spend most of my time behind the camera rather than up here on stage.
people should note that the uh, this meeting is being recorded, and actually anybody uh, who wants to record it can do so. I notice several cameras in back, and the visual videographer is uh, on the side here in the front. So if you speak or uh, get in range of these cameras, you may expect your voice or image to appear. Uh, these the videographer recordings that plan to be posted to the Worldcon Events YouTube channel uh, as soon as convenient, which probably will not be until after this uh, Worldcon. Some procedural notes uh, as you came in, there's an attendance list. You should have noted <coughs> your attendance there. Uh, there are also uh, business meeting attendee ribbons, I think, at the front table at the table over there, uh, the entrance table. Uh, I would appreciate it if you would silence uh, your cell phones or other noise-making devices. Uh, when you are called on to speak, or if you uh, want to make a motion or so forth, you should either come up to the podium on the stage, or alternatively, uh, you can have a microphone can be brought to you. You should speak into the microphone so that everybody can hear you and you'll get recorded appropriately. And you should just start, as was mentioned, by giving your name for the benefit of the secretary in the minutes of the meeting. Uh, and uh, as you also been mentioned before, uh, when people speak, uh, they don't <laughs> they don't have to say necessarily things that are that are factual, uh, but they should uh, speak to the motion that's before the body, the thing we're going to vote on, and on the positive aspects or negative aspects of that motion, they should not be making any remarks about any other speakers. So the agenda for today's meeting is to have any committee reports or committee business that was not completed yesterday. Uh, and uh, any business that's not completed. Then uh, to go on to constitutional amendments that have been passed last year that are up for ratification. Uh, the Wispless Constitution requires that a change be voted uh, in favor two years in a row before it takes effect. And then we have new constitutional amendments uh, which have been introduced this year. And for these uh, constitutional amendments we can debate and uh, vote on. So in committee reports, uh, the first item is the uh, Mark Protection Committee. The report is Appendix A to your agenda. It was uh, received yesterday, but uh, there's an election for the um, members of the Mark Protection Committee. Some of them are elected and some appointed. So uh, there were three elected slots to be elected this year. Uh, the three incumbents, were nominated yesterday, and uh, that's uh, Judy Bemis, uh, Mike Wilmoth, and uh, Joni Dashoff. Uh, has the secretary received in the, whoever, in order to appear on the ballot, you have to have a uh, submit a written consent. No other written consents have been received. Um, since the number of people nominated is the same as the number of openings, uh, if there were a larger number, if there were four or five people nominated for the three positions, we would have to have a written ballot. But uh, I'd like to see if there's any objection to simply declaring the three incumbents who have been nominated, uh, declare them to have been elected to the three slots. Seeing no objections, uh, I will they are be elected. The next item of business is the Marks Authorization uh, Constitutional Amendment. Uh, it's item A11A. It's uh, in your agenda. It's fairly short. Speak well, I will read it first. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> it would add uh, to the Constitution, uh, the, the most important part is to add a, a section saying that 
selected convention committees are authorized to use the WISPAS marks to the extent necessary and customary to run their conventions. The Mark Protection Committee may provide more detailed guidance and that makes some minor changes uh, so that references to uh, World Connor change or World Connor NASFIC are changed to selected convention. Uh, is there any debate on this motion? Uh, call on Mr. Stanley, the chair of the Mark Protection Committee. I'm Kevin Stanley. I am the, in this case, I am the chair of the Mark Protection Committee. The committee manages the intellectual property of the World Science Fiction Society on behalf of all of the conventions selected by the society. And this motion is fairly simple in that it explicitly authorizes the MPC to assist Worldcons and other selected conventions such as NASFIC in how the use of the marks is done. It also generalizes the terms in that were in the Constitution to cover all committees selected by WISFITS. Are there any further speeches on the uh, marks authorization constitutional amendment? Seeing none, is there any objection to adopting this uh, constitutional amendment? Seeing none, it's uh, approved this year, and it'll be forwarded to next year's WorldCon for ratification. Uh, if it is ratified next year, then it will actually go into the Constitution. So uh, the next item is the Nitpicking and Fly Spectrum Committee. Uh, since I'm the chair of the Nitpicking and Fly Spectrum Committee, uh, the Deputy Presiding Officer, Governor, will take over. Specking committee is responsible for rules housekeeping of various sorts. The first item that was on yesterday's report was a change to the standing rules and it was approved. There were two constitutional amendments introduced. And the first one is item A21B, which is to add a A21B, um, and I, I have a different version of the agenda, so my page numbers will not necessarily match up. The actual wording is on page four of what I have. But uh, this, provides uh, contingent rules for those cases where um, a world con cannot be held for various reasons. Uh, I understand it's on page nine of the agenda as a distributor, is it correct? And rather than me necessarily read it, because it has a lot of word in it, I would call upon the chair of the committee, Mr. Eastlake, to present the initial argument for it. Oh, I should note, by the way, from your printed copies, um, at the end of a very, at the very end of it, section six, section six point six, um, 
the words, uh, we did, yeah, the, no, you, the, your amendment passed, I yes, believe. Yes, but it's on the slide, it says 514, not 515. Oh, that's correct, yes. So I can define it if you want. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, it, it's, oh, a, it's a minor one, let's not worry about it. Okay. The words per 5.1.1 and 5.1.5 were added to the end of the wording in section 6.6, .6, which basically refers back to the two paragraphs above it in the text of the amendment. Okay, Mr. Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment is to uh, say what will happen in cases where a world con cannot be held, or if a world con is held, uh, the business meeting is unable to act, perhaps because there are not enough attendees. There's a required minimum number of society members for the WorldCon business meeting to be valid. So it basically provides that constitutional amendments up for ratification get postponed, and that elections to the Market Protection Committee uh, similarly get postponed and the elected members' terms are extended. Uh, the original version, as we're as uh, proposed by the Nitpicking and Flyspecking Committee, also permitted the business meeting to voluntarily delay ratification on a constitutional amendment, but that provision was removed yesterday at the preliminary business meeting, which is what this note is uh, about. Uh, this seems like a good thing to do because there have been years in which the WorldCon was not held, due to wars and so forth, and with the pandemic, uh, it was almost the case that uh, one was not held that year, and it's uh, sometimes there's it's difficult to get enough people in, in attendance at the business meeting for it to occur. So this basically just takes care of those contingencies and uh, explains what to do in a way as to minimize the harm to the business of the society from uh, such contingencies. Is there a, someone who wishes to speak against adopting this proposal? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at all? Is there any objection to adopting this? Hearing none, this constitutional, uh, is there an objection? A question? Uh, microphone, please. Uh, I'm, state your name. Uh, my name is Sad. Yeah. English name, English name is Madinat Four. Uh, my question is the attendance. Could you, uh, could, you, could you stand up, please? Okay, okay, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, my question is that the Shunghui Bajing Ren Shu Sen Xian Gui Ding Wei Shi Ar Ming Xi Hui Ren Yuan. Uh, Dr. Yi, uh, Rugo Chen, Mu Chen, Shi Ji Kuan Da Hui, Zong Ti Chu Xin Ren Shu, Fu Zong Ti, uh, Hui Yuan Ren Shu, Yi Bao Ku Jin Tian Ning Ku Yi Tan, uh, Dai Chang Da Dai Ya Xi Da Ren Tan Dao Da, Hu Ban Xi Hui Shi Hui Yi Da. 出席人数，呃，我个人，那么我首先认为，以现行的十二名协会成员的法定人数数量过少，因此，我认为应该在增加对法定人数上限的要求的情况下，在讨论未达到法定人数是否会议的问题。谢谢。However, it may not be obvious, but this is not actually relevant to the amendment that is on the floor. Um, a proposal to change the quorum would be a separate and unrelated proposal. We are dealing with the rules as they are, not necessarily the way the member might want them to be. And that's not a criticism, but you could propose uh, although we, the deadline for submitting new business has passed, you could propose a change that would change the quorum as a separate number. The chair also observes that there have been cases in recent times, including when, when I was presiding in 2007, with thousands of members at the convention, where we came very close to not having 12 members, we actually had to go round up people to come in so we could call the meeting to order. So, that. so uh, do you understand what I'm, the explanation? 
Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak to the proposal before us, which are the changes on uh, to this section under item two? Is there any objection to adopting this? Hearing none, the proposal is adopted and will be sent to next year's Worldcon for ratification. Same slide, sorry. The next proposal out of the uh, committee is called an assistant change. Uh, which page is it on this agenda? Well, where's the word? Where's the word? So it's on a different page. I think it's on page five, actually. There it, is. It, it is on page eight of most of the printed agendas. It is called, it's under the heading of item three, short title consistent change. And uh, it is, although it changes a lot of words in different places, what it actually has the effect of doing is generalizing the changes that were made to WSPAS memberships uh, that were ratified in the past to cover all conventions that WSPAS selects. So not just Worldcons, but also NASDAQ at the moment and possibly others in the future. Mr. Eastlake. I'm Donald Eastlake. Uh, changes were made in the Constitution uh, a, while, a while ago, fairly recently, to distinguish uh, WISFAS uh, society membership from the right to attend the Worldcon, so that uh, in order to have WISFAS rights, you didn't need WISFAS membership, uh, but in order to attend the convention, you need a separate attending supplement. And for certain things, like coming to the business meeting, you need both. You need to be a WISIS member and have the right to attend. So those changes were not really consistently applied uh, throughout the Constitution. Uh, the major uh, critical parts were changed, but uh, the other parts were not changed consistently. So the motivation for this is really just to make the Constitution consistent in recognizing this distinction between a society membership uh, and a separate uh, attending right. Is there anyone who wishes, that's a speech in favor, sorry. Is there anybody who wishes, wishes to speak against this proposal? Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at all about it? Is there any objection to adopting this proposal. Hearing none, this proposal is adopted and will be sent to next year's Worldcon for ratification. And I believe that concludes the business of the nitpicking and fly specking committee. And I return the chair to Mr. And I return the chair to uh, Mr. Eastlake. mention what has happened related to the standing rules. Uh, there were uh, two changes uh, to standing rules, and they were both adopted yesterday. And you can find these uh, C1 in your uh, agenda. C2 is a last minute change. And I can show people what that is if, uh, if there's a request. But I prefer to just move along with the business today. So these were both take effect at, uh, these were both uh, decided by the business meeting to take effect immediately. And usually, standing rule changes take effectively 
uh, end of the convention. So the next category is Mr. Is that your name? Uh, Nicholas Marsh from, and, and, um, and from Belgium. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, Chairman. Uh, Ch Chairman, has the text of the second amendment that was adopted yesterday to the standing rules, has that been published? Because I don't think I've seen it. It was uh, displayed to the meeting. I can go find it if you want. Not in paper, it's on I've slide. also posted it to Facebook, but uh, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't really help. Yeah. Facebook. I, I know. <laughs> This is the this is the motion. You're welcome to come over here to look at it if you want. I see that. So that's fine. Thank you. Um, may I just take a photo? You may. was printed as a supplement to the agenda uh, that has the text of this motion on it. Unless there's further So the supplement that we just passed out is uh, the report of the committee on F7 and F8, uh, which is not the, the standing rule change that we were just talking about, but still it's useful information for you to have. And this report of the F7 and F8 committee was one of the things deferred until tomorrow. So, moving on to So moving on to constitutional amendments. There are two constitutional amendments that are up for ratification this year. These are uh, in your agenda. Uh, items E1 and E2.
In both of these, the time limits have been uh, debate have been set to six minutes. The debate time limits were all set yesterday. Um, these may seem short, but it's really just the time speaking. So overhead time and getting the microphone to you and things like that do not count towards this time limit. The first item uh, is the 0% solution, item E1, up for ratification, which uh, deletes a section of the Constitution. Uh, is there any debate on this constitutional amendment? Mr. Gallo. As the maker of the original motion that caused this section of the Constitution to exist, I would like to go on record as saying that I am convinced that I had made a mistake in initially advocating for it, and the proponents of this motion last year convinced me why it was wrong, and I thank you for that effort. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing no speech against, is there anybody who objects to ratifying this constitutional amendment? Seeing no objection, uh, this is ratified, and that section will be deleted from the Constitution, effective at the end of this convention. The next uh, constitutional amendment up for ratification, E2, best game or interactive work. This is uh, somewhat longer, and it basically adds a new Hugo category uh, defined as best game or interactive work. And uh, defines what it is and uh, carves in interactive works out of the dramatic presentation categories and the best graphic story category and the uh, categories too. So, uh, can you look at this in your agenda, which has been available for a while. Uh, does anybody wish to speak either in favor of or against ratifying this constitutional amendment? Mr. Yao. Please. Yeah, yeah. It, well, he, or, or, either way. Um, just a parliamentary inquiry. Uh, how would a choose your own adventure book uh, count in this removing it out of novel? I'd like to get it on the record one way or the other. I almost don't care what the answer is, but I think we need an answer for future Hugo administrators to consider. Thank you. Hmm. My reading of the 3.2.x text here, uh, in my opinion, is that uh, a primarily written work, but in which requires input from the uh, person reading or consuming this work, and where the choices they make uh, determine uh, the outcome or the, the sequence uh, would count as an interactive work and would therefore no longer be eligible in the written categories. Uh, yes, uh, you want to come up or have a microphone? Uh, stand up and state your name, please. 大家好,我叫唐碧英。關於最佳遊戲或互動作品,現有表述中,互動作品做了一個定義,但是沒有對遊戲做定義。互动作品是否等于游戏
我们目前了解到的游戏，其实分了非常多的分类方式，包括它的互动性的玩法，包括它的题材，例如科幻游戏。那么我们如何去定义科幻游戏？我不认为科幻游戏和互动作科幻互动作品是相同的内容，这个表述不够准确，我希望能够调整。If I might just comment that assuming this were adopted, then as with any other Hugo category, many of these questions are just up to the Hugo administrators appointed by the WorldCon, which is administering the Hugos uh, that year. And if there is a question of something exactly where, they get to decide. Is there any further debate on this constitutional amendment? Ratification. Hello, I'm Mo Ziwei. I have a question. Why is the time of the Hugo Awards put on the 2028th anniversary? Is it not on the 2023rd anniversary? I don't know. I don't know. This is what is called a sunset provision. The idea is that uh, the Hugo will be in effect uh, for a few years and uh, it will automatically go away. The, the, the sunset provision is intended to answer questions like, will this really work and will there be enough voters in this category and things like that. Uh, by putting in a sunset provision, it means that based on experience with the award, uh, the business meeting will get to make a decision as to whether to continue it or not. So if this is ratified, if we vote in favor of it today, it will go into effect and it will continue until the, in the, the 2028 Worldcon, uh, but unless the business meeting decides that it's proven to be good in practice and actual experience, then uh, I mean, unless they re-ratify it, it's called, then it will go away. And it provides that this is automatically added to the agenda for the 2028 Worldcon business meeting. I hope that answers your question. Comment? Yeah. Yeah. Please stand and state your name. Hello, I'm Yang Xu. And I want to make a comment on the definition of the game. So, I think the game is going to have interesting game design. Actually, it needs a creative game design. And third, it needs a beautiful game design. Then, fourth, it needs a compelling game design. Then, fifth, it needs a compelling game design. 当时的技术基础，对我们如果讲那个科幻游戏来说，我觉得就是按照我们中国哲学，嗯、呃，可能它需要就是向内求、向外求，呃，向外求，向内能够把我们带到人性的深处，向外能够进入，能够让我们进入视野之外的世界。所以说，我觉得最好的游戏，嗯、呃，就是好的游戏不仅仅是游戏，而是就是游戏艺术。嗯、呃，所以说我其实希望我们的游戏能够。或者互动游戏能够再精确的定义，谢谢。Okay, yeah, I guess that's a speech against because it、uh, said that there should be a more accurate definition.、Um, is there a speech in favor of ratification? Stand up. Stand up. Wait, wait. 好，嗯，我是夏天。接下来我想请问的是，互动作品是，呃，我们知道这个游戏作品现在有的作品是这个叫独立游戏，是由个人或若干同人团体以非商业盈利目的制作。另外，亦有以游戏公司啊，大型的商业游戏公司
基于人类文明的开发的这种游戏作品。啊，即便我们不讨论这些作品的科幻性或者他们的艺术性之高低，我们认为在互动作品或游戏分类上，对这些作品是否可以同样的标准来进行划分和看待？因为我们可以看到，我们可以看到的是，独立个人，也就是独立游戏或者这个商业开发的这种游戏，它在。它的艺术性，它的这个商业盈利，还有它的创作能力。Excuse me, I don't believe that's a question. 我我没说，我没有说。It's a speech against, perhaps. Okay, I understand, but it's you said you had a question, but it sounded like you were just going to ask a question. If you're making a speech against the term text. 啊，这个问题是，如果互动作品是颁发给开发游戏的个人，还是颁颁发给这个游戏？谢谢。This is a, 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 a Hugo category for a work, so it would be for the game. Uh, are there other speeches uh, concerning this constitutional amendment? Okay. Uh, in that case, we will proceed for a vote. Uh, I think there was enough controversy that we should do a serpentine vote. So, all of those uh, in favor of the ratifying this constitutional amendment will please stand. Okay, we should count off starting over here. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, two. Say one, say one and set it down, and they they just two and sit down, okay? You're th no, you're three. Yeah. Four. Five. Six. Four. Five. Ten. Do any members of the head table wish to vote? Thank you. All those opposed, please stand. So the vote is 10 in favor and 3 against, and the Constitutional Amendment is ratified and becomes a part of the Constitution as of the end of this meeting. The next item is F.1, a new constitutional amendment called Convention and Time Bracket. Uh, it adds, would add to the Constitution uh, the text, a selected convention must be held between 20 June and 20 December, and preferably between 1 August and 30 September of the year for which it is selected, unless some deviation from this is authorized under section 2.6 of the Constitution. Uh, the maker of the motion uh, originally when it first came up last year is... No, 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 it's new. Oh, sorry. This is a new one. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. The maker of this motion has priority. Kevin C. Kevin Kevin Stanley. Honorable Chairman and members, nearly every Worldcon held since this convention started in 1939 has been held between the first weekend of July and the first weekend of September. Most of them the majority of them were held 
the first weekend of September, and then a few more were held earlier in August. The entire structure of Worldcon in its history and the way it grew up assumed that Worldcon was always going to be held in that period. And that means that a lot of the things we developed in our rules and our processes and our traditions assumed that. Now, in particular, it would be rather difficult to administer the Hugo Awards if the Worldcon was held much earlier than the earliest period shown in this proposal. And it would actually cause a great deal of trouble to successor Worldcons if you held the Worldcon any later than mid-December, such as was done um, two years ago. Now, it should be obvious that, of course, if you bid for a Worldcon in a certain year, you can't possibly hold it the following year. Uh, so, and, and again, moving it earlier would do a lot of harm to our structures. And while Worldcon committees are independently run, they are interdependent. Worldcon committees need to be cognizant, aware of the responsibilities of their predecessors and of their successors. And therefore, we propose, those of us on this motion, propose that we give some specific guidance and also set rules that say you really must hold your convention during this period of time. And that to move beyond those boundaries would actually, and the wording here in effect says this, you must consult with your successor before you move it any further down the line. And this is not meant to be an aspersion against any organization. It's just that circumstances, such as the pandemic and facilities issues, have conspired to show us what happens if we move. Thank you. Time in favor has expired. Are uh, there any speakers against this constitutional amendment? Mr. Yao. I move, oh sorry, Ben Yellow, again. I move to amend by deleting the, and preferably between 1 August and 30 September. Is out of order, we've already voted on that and defeated that amendment. Uh, may I finish? And replace it by saying that you should consult with your successor if you are going to move it to later than 30 September. And as such, I believe that is a different amendment than we had discussed before. Uh, I'll accept it as different enough. <laughs> uh, is there a second for this amendment? I second it. It's been moved and seconded to amend. Name. Uh, that's a little too no, she needs to state your name. Sorry. No, not the second or doesn't. Oh. Alexia Habel, I second the amendment. Okay. Uh, it's been seconded to uh, delete, preferably between 1 August and 30 September, and insert, uh, and must consult with their successor if after 30 September. Uh, speech on the amendment. I, I think it's a. I think it's an inquiry. Inquiry. Okay. Well, we're, um, we're done. Uh, 你好，我认为啊，各位观众好，我认为除与下一届组委会啊，除与下一届组委会之外，还需要与当季至少应该通过某种公开的方式，在确定。呃，在九月三十号举行以前，你购买的当届会员，购买了当届世界科学大会的世界
，导致了具有会员资格的会员进行某种程度的协商或者进行公示，然后再做出。在九月三十号以后举行世界中文大会的决定，也就是说，不能仅仅和下届组委会进行商量。谢谢。So、that would be a second order amendment, which is not allowed under our rules.、Uh, so we need to、uh, proceed and vote on on this、uh, amendment, and then possibly you can make another amendment to add further、uh, text. Are there any other speeches on the amendment? I agree completely with Kevin's initial comment that you can't move it earlier. Life would be too difficult. I believe we have shown that you can safely move it to later. But Since, as Kevin correctly pointed out, it does have implications for your successor, I believe that putting in mandatory wording that says you must consult with your successor will help deal with Kevin's issue, and will deal correctly with the fact that it really does affect your your successor. You should really not hurt another Worldcon, and I believe it is important to emphasize that. Thank you. Is there a speech against the amendment? I have an inquiry. Yes.、Mm -hmm. Mr. Sandley has an inquiry. I just wanted to make sure I understood what the amendment, the actual amendment, was. Was to strike the and preferably between the, the and preferably between one August and thirty September. That's the words that are being struck. I'm not sure about the and, but yes. Delete the preferability clause and replace it with "should consult with the successor if you are moving it to later than 30th September." Is that okay? And that is that was that part of the amendment? Yes. Yes. Okay, I misunderstood that. To strike out and replace, and the and is still there. Okay. All right. I will give a speech against, in a technical sense.、Uh, I believe, as the maker of the motion, Mr. Chair. That、uh, because of the phrase about this is authorized under Section 2.6 means that you would have to consult with them anyway. But I also think that it is, it is probably a good idea to explicitly state it. So, but that's technically a speech against. Is there a speech? Another speech in favor of the amendment? Seeing none, any speeches? Any further speech on the amendment? For or against? We then、uh, proceed to vote on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. <coughs> Thank you. Hands down. All those opposed to the amendment, please raise your hand. The amendment passes unanimously. What is the time situation? Okay.、Uh, we now revert to the main、uh, motion as amended.、Uh, there is no time remaining for speech in favor. There is 38 seconds available for speeches against. Does anybody wish to speak against? Parliamentary inquiry. Yeah. Honorable Chair, as a parliamentary inquiry, would it be in order for our colleague who spoke earlier on this to now move to insert? Let me see. And,、uh, I, I don't know the exact wording. And should consult with those members, with the members of the success, or should consult with the members of the successor convention. I think that's. I, I thought it was the, the supporting members. Oh,、uh, the the the, the, mem the membership. Of the of the current world, must should consult with the members of the current Worldcon. The, the Worldcon that is moving dates, basically. So is that would it be in order? It would be in order. Do you want? I would ask the member. Do you want to move that amendment? Would you like to make propose that change? 
that. Uh, well, you, you, I will move. Okay, I, uh, I'll explain it. To, I'll explain it to. I'll move it then. Uh, I, move, I move to amend by inserting them at the appropriate place, and should um, and should consult with the members of the current WorldCom. Is there a second for this amendment? Say yes. Yes, there is. And uh, you're out of debate time, correct? Basically. Uh, a little bit. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to extend debate by, shall we say, four minutes. Is there any objection to extending debate time for four minutes? Seeing none, debate time is so extended.我之所以要求在公改世界空外协会举办日期及在九月三十号举办之后同全体现有世界空外协会会员进行协商的原因是基于本届大会组织的实际情况本届大会原定于今年八月份举行在由八月份更改至十月十八号到十月二十号也就是
Uh, it's time to go. Okay. Uh, we are out of debate time. Uh, we'll proceed to vote on the amendment, which adds the requirement to consult with the members. For a while, it is it goes after 30 September. All those in favor of adding that provision, please raise your hand. No, 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 no. He's voting. No, no, he's voting. You're asked to. Did you just ask you to vote? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those opposed to that amendment. Thank you. The nays have it, so the amendment fails. Uh, the time is exhausted. We now will go to vote on the main motion as amended by the First Amendment, which did pass. Uh, and I guess I will, this has been enough discussion and so forth, I will do a serpentine vote. All those in favor of IMF1 as amended, please stand. I guess we'll count off. One. Two. Seven. Three. Okay. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Any table members? Uh, all those opposed to item F1 as amended, please stand. in favor, item F1 is uh, adopted and will be forwarded to next year's WorldCon for possible ratification. Next item is F2, Bid Committee Contactability. It requires that bid committees provide their postal and email address when they file to be on the ballot for site selection and that the ballot, site selection ballots also have the postal and email address for the bids. The debate time is set for uh, four minutes on this motion. Uh, is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, we can proceed for a for a vote, uh, I'll do by show of hands. All those in favor of uh, item F2, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The item F2 is adopted unanimously and will be forwarded to the next year's WorldCon for possible ratification. The next item is a little bit more complicated. It's item F3. So there are two uh, competing proposals, you might say. Uh, item F.3.A and F.3.B in your agenda. So the procedure that the plan to follow is to initially uh, discuss and possibly amend F.3.A and then uh, separately uh, discuss and possibly amend F.3.B. Uh, then uh, take the results of those two vote between them, and then have a final vote on whichever alternative is selected. So the first question for the assembly is F.3.A, about completeness, and a debate has been set at five minutes on this item. Does anybody wish to uh, give a speech in favor of or against F.3.A? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Wait a minute. Mr. Young. Oh, there it is. Inquiry, uh, if there is no discussion on F3A, then we should assume 
that F3A will stand as in the printed agenda? It will. The alternative is going to go them. The first alternative will be as printed in the agenda for A. Thank you. Confirming there's nobody wishes to speak to A. Okay. Uh, we next have F.3.D. The second alternative. Uh, does anybody wish to uh, speak on F.3.B or make any perfecting changes or the like? Lastly, we have大家好，我叫姚池。呃，这个依然是我提出来的。呃，就是呃，主要想进行一个说明，就是呃，在我们填写呃，填写选址选票的时候，在地址这一栏，呃，我们建议就是保留呃，这个姓名、签名、地址，
the parliamentary inquiry is. Wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Trying to go here, right. Right. I guess not. So it will be province slash state uh, and then and city. Go ahead with your parliamentary inquiry. The parliamentary inquiry is, am I correct that this list does not require these fields to be included in this exact order? It, they just have to be on the ballot there. And the and that elements that would be that make that don't apply, such as province state for those countries that do not have such subdivisions, it wouldn't matter. You don't fill in something that doesn't exist at all. Are these two assumptions correct? Or should I do them one at a time? <laughs> the first one I is think the order, basically. I, I, I agree that the order is immaterial. Uh, I, I think it's, as usual, it's up to the site selection administrators uh, as to how they treat these things. Um, but uh, you know, my opinion is they should allow uh, meaningless fields to remain blank. So if a, a person who lives in unorganized territory in Alaska, which is not part of any city or county, they don't have to fill in things that don't, don't uh, apply. Stand. Microphone coming. State name. Alexia Hebel. Um, does signature imply written signature and or electronic signature? The question on electronic signature is handled by a separate provision in the Constitution, which says that all of the bidders have to agree. Right? I'm not sure if it includes the administering convention also, but I believe it does. So the administering convention and all the bidders have to agree to accept electronic signatures, and then they can be accepted. If that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Of course, the signature occurs in both alternative A and alternative B. So, yeah. OK, uh, any further comments? Um, F.3.3. Seeing none, uh, the question is now to vote between F.3.A and F.3.B. But first, if there's anybody who wishes to speak in favor of one alternative or the other, uh, they'd be welcome to do so. so now. I prefer the first alternative. The key about this is that the top halves of the ballot, which are the part that contain the sections referenced, are the committee being voted on's only guaranteed record of what the current or latest address of the voter is. Uh, if for example, we were to adopt F3B, then it means that essentially we have a voter who we do not have any way of knowing what their current postal address is. So if you wanted to send them a postal notification, you couldn't. You might be able to get it out of the administering convention's records. But we also know that in the two years since the administering convention started, many people will have moved, which means that you end up with lost members. And I really don't like the idea of losing members. I would much rather have the latest address, which you get by the most complete version of the top half of the ballot, which is the version dealt with in F3A. 
Is uh, those speech in favor of F3A, a speech for F3B? Yeah, yes, yes. Name, please. Name. Uh, my name, oh, sorry. My name is called Tang Bingying. I vote B because I think that the word is a personal statement. It is not a necessary option in the election. Third, I have received information about the address. I do not need you to give me the information. This may be a challenge for me. Thank you. 嗯，对，可以。嗯，speaking as somebody that has been in charge of this entire convention，it's not just a case of whether the member needs to be contacted。In-site selection，we are determining people's vote。We need to determine that people are eligible to vote。We have a requirement to make sure that we are counting。distinct people separately and that the same person cannot, cannot vote multiple times. And two people with the same name can live How in the same of, city. How many favor of F3A has expired? Time in favor of F3A has expired. Thank you. Uh, speech in favor of F3B. Seeing none, we will proceed. Uh, is there, sorry, come back. 呃，我再说一下补充说明。呃，因为我们在购买这个 w e s t f e s t member 的时候，已经填写了自己的这个呃信息，所以在这个 ballot 上面，呃，最重要的信息应该是他的会员编号以及他的 token 号，呃，以及他个人的签名。对于具具体详细的地址，呃，因为大部分的选票是电子选票，呃，不涉及到这个邮寄的这种呃情况，所以。呃，我们觉得这个在地址这一栏不需要详细到呃具体的门牌号或者是街道的名称。谢谢。Microphone. An additional four minutes. Is there any objection to extending debate time by four minutes? Seeing none, debate time is extended by four minutes. Uh, speech in favor of F3A. Alexia. Alexia Fable. I speak in favor of 3A because I have dealt with the registration information for both Shaikhan 8 and Chengdu 2023, and I have found that you do not have the current information about a member until the site selection ballot actually appears at the convention. Speech in favor of F3B. Any further speeches? Oh. Or behind you. Oh, uh, 主席好, 我叫孙安春, 我是赞成那个3B的。因为在不同的国家，可能有不同的邮寄习惯。比如说，在我们这边，有些时候你没有具体的地址号，你只要有一个电话号码，我们的这个邮政人员都会把你需要的资料呃找到你，送到你的手中。所以说，对于我们来说，没有必要让地址呃那么具体、那么详细。然后也，嗯，这也并不能给我们带造成困扰。另外，核实会员身份这一块。呃，除了地址以外，还有很多其他的办法，也没有必要要求呃地址一定要那么精确。谢谢。Speech in favor of the three A. What is that? 呃，我直接说我的观点，我既不赞成 A， 也不。好，我首首先我叫宋明灿。呃，我既不赞成 A， 也不赞成 B， 因为我觉得，嗯、呃，因为我觉得
呃使用电子邮件或者是实呃实体的邮寄，这是一种个人的习惯。我更倾向于新增一个偏好选项。嗯、你可以在这个偏好选项上面。Point of order. Point point of order. Yeah, yeah. This. You can. This, this is sorry. Excuse me. This speech is not、uh, germane at this point. We're dividing between A and B. Speeches.、Uh, you have to speak either in favor, or, in favor of one alternative or the other. After we've finished with this, you can then speak against the whole thing. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so、uh, the last, I guess, speech in favor of、uh, F3A. I thought,、uh, yes. I think A, its necessity is in the fact that only if you clearly state your personal information and personal information, you can make a decision. This can be easily made by us. 对选民进行一个整理，对。Anybody who is wishing to speak in favor of F3B? Any speeches for either alternative? We will proceed to a vote between the alternatives. I'm going to do it by serpentine the ballot. Those in favor of F3A, please stand. Parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Mr. Chair, what is the total remaining debate time left? How much time is left? We've just added four. Well, what's the what's the total available for what's the total available for debate at this point overall? Ten minutes. We have ten minutes left. Four minutes for this session. Well, we're we got we got done we're done with that one. We now have selected the one which one to vote to debate on. Now the question is. Debating, debating between or not debating between the two proposals, but whether we vote on the proposal or whether we like this selected proposal or not. How many minutes? Forty minutes in total. Fourteen total. Oh, we added four, so that'd be eighteen.、Uh, let me try. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> We're doing some time calculations. <laughs> which take, which consumes no time. Um, we still have one minute fifteen seconds for time in favor of F three A and one minute twenty one seconds for F Honorable Chair, in the interest of cutting through all this,、uh, 
I, I move that we set the, the date time flat right now on whether to adopt this or not to four minutes. Is there any objection to setting the date time on whether to adopt the selected alternative? That set that debate time to four minutes. Seeing no objection, uh, does anybody wish to speak on whether to adopt or reject the selected alternative? Now's, now's your chance. I usually read the one. Now's your chance. If you want.我可以就在这儿做发表观点吗我刚刚说的是我既不是特别赞成A也不是特别赞成B 算是两种不同的选择有的人可能更倾向于A 也可以不填写电子邮件信息，仅仅填写邮寄地址信息，这样也应该是可以的。嗯，谢谢。Thank you. Uh, that was a speech uh, against adopting the selected alternative, uh, F3A. Is there a speech uh, in favor of adopting the selected alternative, <coughs> Dave McCarty? <coughs> Dave McCarty. I, I believe that the selected alternative that we are looking at adopting basically just codifies what has been long custom and tradition in the, in the World Science Fiction Society. We need, the, the convention has a need to identify its members because we're not just an event that people go to, we are a community that people are joining and this is an organization that has benefits and we need to make sure that the, the correct people get those benefits. Is there a speech against uh, adopting F3A, which is a selected one? Is there any further debate? Seeing no debate, since there's been controversy, I will go to a serpentine vote on this. We are voting on uh, adopting uh, F3A in your agenda as the as a constitutional amendment, and if it's adopted, then it will be forwarded for ratification uh, next year. All those in favor of adopting F3A, please stand. Starting with Dave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, five, five, and eleven. Eleven, including the head table. All those opposed, please stand. So there were 11 in favor and 6 opposed, so F3A uh, is adopted and will be forwarded to next year's convention for ratification. So we've been going for about uh, more than an hour and a half. Uh, unless there's some objection, I'd like to suggest we have a 10 minute recess. Uh, not hearing any objection, so we'll reconvene at, uh, let's say, 11.50. Uh, okay. We're in, in recess. I call the meeting to order. No. Microphone. Tony uh, Xia. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to propose the uh, constitutional advance item F11 up front because we have have some other commitment to go and need to do it right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, yes. Yes. Uh, 
Is there any objection to moving item F11, uh, the last of the new constitutional amendments, uh, to this point in the agenda? Seeing no objection, we will take up F11 next. F11 is the uh, independent films amendment that proposes to add two new Hugo categories for best independent short film and best independent feature film. Do the makers of the motion, the sponsors amendment, wish to speak first? We have the yeah, right. Uh, I'd like to speak in Chinese. Sure. Uh, Uh,已经有了巨大 呃那个商业的那个回报那么我们在在他们的成就中给他们增加一些余锅奖的光辉他们或许真是也或许并不真是而另一方面我们有大量的独立制作的基于粉丝对科幻类型热爱而且有极高创作水平的独立电影不管是
Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, is there a speech against F11? Uh, Dave, I think, is just a hair faster. <laughs> Dave McCarty, uh, I, I am making a motion to amend, which I believe is speech against. Sure. No, it's not. It's neutral, but go ahead. Well, I, I, I would make a motion to amend to actually condense both categories and remove the time restriction and just make it best independent film. Is there a second for this amendment? Second. A second and back there. So we have a uh, uh, moved and seconded to combine these, uh, moving the time limits. Uh, is there a debate on the amendment? Uh, you want to speak in favor of it? So, uh, speak, speaking as a, speaking as an administrator of the awards, um, if we want to recognize independent film, I think the right first step is to recognize it as a category and see if there is enough interest in our community and enough uh, ver films of various sizes to then split it into two, as we did with dramatic presentations, which previously were just one award, and then split into two because we saw there was sufficient. Uh, sufficient nominations of, of both scales. Thank you. And speech against uh, the amendment. So this is just the speeches on the amendment. Yangshi,同样作为雨果奖的评选委员会的中方负责人,我有一个疑问是觉得说我们现在的这个雨果奖的类型已经非常多了,我们已经有相关的这个电影的这个类别。然后如果再增加一个这个的话，我觉得会让整个如果奖的评选啊变得更加的复杂，然后并且如果奖是还是以文学为基础，所以我觉得可能还是要更多的focus在这个文学上。This is just debating whether or not to merge them. This is the amendment. Shouldn't talk about the overall question. So, is there anybody who wishes to speak on whether these two categories should be merged into one or should remain separate?我的名字叫唐冰我建议是把它放在一起因为本身相对来说刚才其实老师提到独立短片独立长片也就都是独立电影独立电影相对于其他的大众的商业性的电影它本身是小众的但我也认为它是应该受到重视的在没有足够多的
uh, against uh, a feature film is a very difficult situation sometimes and getting recognition is already hard enough to see the independence. Um, and in actual fact, I think the Hugos have already answered the question to that by having the dramatic presentations split to short film and feature length film anyway. So as you've already had one merged award and then split it, I would say it makes more sense to have two awards to follow and mirror those uh, mainstream awards. Yeah, and I'm uh, the uh, festival director for the London Science Fiction Film Festival. Um, and in fact, we're um, talking with lots of other science fiction film festivals, several of which are guests here at the moment, uh, about trying to uh, continually promote independent science fiction films, which is our expertise and our area. Thank you. Is there further debate on the amendment? I do wish to answer a comment made by the previous speaker, which indicated that we were talking about independent short films, that the reason that we have a dramatic presentation short and dramatic presentation long is because of independent short films and independent long films. In fact, what it is, is that BDP short is TV shows, BDP long is movies, so it is not the case that we really talk about short films at all in the Yugos. Are there any further? I'm in debate for this motion. Oh. Okay, the time has been exhausted on the amendment. Uh, we'll now vote on the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of uh, merging these two categories into one category, please raise your hand. Thank you. Uh, all those opposed? Okay, I believe it's nine in favor, 12 opposed, so the nays have it and the categories are not merged. And now we can debate the main uh, question again. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm to up for now. Okay, uh, any further debate on the any question about the lobby? I move to replace the wording uh, making this a constitutional amendment with a recommendation to the next three to the, the next three world cons to adopt one or more of these as their preferred extra Yugo category. And I'll let the head table figure out the exact wording for that. I will basically re replace, uh, amend the Constitution by adding the following two clauses to move uh, to request the next three world cons to consider one or both of these categories. Well, uh, you can only have one. So right. you know, one of these categories if there's special Hugo. The, the world cons have the authority to create a special temporary category that only applies for that, that year. And we can't tell them what to do, but we can request. Um, so this is a motion to amend. Is there a second for this amendment? Mr. Stanley seconds. Uh, speech in favor? Yep. In general, when we come out with a new Yugo proposal, we usually recommend that it be tried out first, rather than going through the long procedure wherein we spend several years adopting it, discover it might or might not work, and if we discover it doesn't work, we then have to go through an unwind procedure by testing it out first. As we have done with many of the categories which we have later accepted as the right thing to do, then I think we should test it out and then if it works, then we can say, oh, it works, adopt it. If it doesn't work, we don't have to worry that we need to unwind the Constitution. 
Thank you. Uh, is there a speech uh, against changing from a constitutional amendment to a resolution? Alexia Habel. I believe that if we delay doing this, it is uh, different in today's world than it once was in making Hugo categories for um, for books. And so I feel that we should implement, and then if necessary, it is just as easy to unwind as it is to wait four years to get something to happen. A speech in favor of the change to uh, recommendation? Further speech against? I would also uh, speak name. on behalf of name. the, uh, name. speak against the motion. Name. Uh, oh, my name is Alan Bond, and name. I was just about to say that. Name. Okay, sorry. As a representative of one of the uh, bids that hopefully will be hosting Worldcon in the next three years, we already have plans for what our special category might be, and putting this on us as a suggestion would basically be invalidating the motion. The, the original motion, and I feel like that is not the intent of this, so I speak against. Uh, speech in favor of changing to a recommendation? Any further speeches on either side? We'll now vote on changing this from a constitutional amendment into a recommendation to the next three dual cons that they use one of these as a special category. Uh, All those in favor of this change to a recommendation, please raise your hand. Uh, okay, thank you. Four. All those opposed to changing to a recommendation? Uh, there are four in favor and nine opposed, so the nays have it, and it remains a constitutional amendment. Uh, we probably don't have much time left. Okay. I think we're, we're actually out of time on the day. Yes. Kevin Stanley. Uh, Honorable Chair, I note this proposal does not include a sunset clause, am I correct? That is correct. Uh, I'm not I'm saying that. Would, in the opinion of the Chair, would, the, would adding a sunset clause to it at the ratification stage be a, a greater change to the proposal? I believe it would make it a lesser change because it basically makes the constitutional provision, a less powerful one, one that lasts, uh, uh, has, has more conditionality associated with it. Uh, so I, I believe that a sense of clause could be added at the ratification stage. But I won't be presiding next to it. Yes, recognizing that the actual decision would be in the hands of the following year's meeting, I thank you. I uh, believe we're out of time for debate. Uh, Dave? We'll do extend the debate two minutes. Is there any objection to extending debate time in two minutes? Seeing none, the debate is so extended. Mr. Hart, Mr. Hart, you're just a speaker. Michael Bond? Mr. Chairman, I move to uh, amend to add a sunset clause for three years after, after the adoption of the human. Uh, is there a second? Okay, yeah, it's moved and seconded to add a sunset clause. For that, so that would be, this is 2023, we ratified in 2024. So in 2027. Okay, so that it would require, that it would automatically be removed from the Constitution unless ratified, by the, re, re ratified by the 2027 business meeting yes. and would automatically be added to the agenda for the 2027 business meeting of the Society. Um, is there, is it, is there is it, okay, so let's, let's the motion. Sure. Okay. And the mover of the amendment would like to speak? It, it is, uh, it is common practice with the new Hugo categories that we've been adding to put in a sunset clause to, to 
so that if the category does not take off with the membership, it is not painful to have it retire. Uh, what I just asked if is the assembly willing to indulge the chair and secretary that you with the leaving us to compose the precise wording. Yes. Let us follow the standard yes. sunset clause wording. Apparently they are. Is there a speech against adding a sunset clause? Seeing none, are there any further debate? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, were you going to speak? No, I think it was handing the language. No, not on this. No. Or on something else. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. So, uh, In that case, we will proceed to vote on the amendment to add a sunset clause. All those in favor of adding a sunset clause, please raise your hand. All right, thank you. All those opposed? Uh, Ten in favor, zero opposed. So the sunset clause is added. What purpose does the member run? Uh, Honorable Chairman, I uh, rise to make an amendment to the proposal. Okay. I would like to amend the proposal to uh, eliminate uh, long form and short form dramatic presentation and put this in its place. I would like to propose that this amendment replaces long form dramatic and short form dramatic presentation and this be what we have in its place. Is there a second for this amendment? Seeing none, the motion fails. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll second it for that. Okay, there is a second. Uh, Nicholas White. Uh, so, I uh, wish to speak in favor. So, Wait. one of the things that I know happens with the Hugo ceremonies is that it gets very- Two long. points of order. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The, uh, Mr. Chair, the first point of order is I believe all debate time has expired and hasn't been extended, and this would have this would come out of that debate time. This is an amendment to this proposal. Is that correct? Two minute extension. I'm not sure if that's expired. I think we used it up. I was just checking. Okay. There was only the one speech. There's got to be some time left. Fine. I withdraw the point of order. Second point of order. Mr. Chair, I believe the motion is not germane. It's it's too far out of scope of the original proposal. So. Chair is in doubt on this question, it's, it's, it's the uh, matter to the assembly. The question is, is this amendment germane to the item uh, F11 that's before us, or is it uh, sufficiently different that uh, it uh, cannot be uh, included as an amendment at this point? Uh, so, um, I think this is not debatable whether an amendment is germane. So, uh, hmm? I believe you should rule one way or the other. You should rule. I decline to rule. So I'm submitting it to the assembly. Uh, rule on the the germaneness. Hmm? Rule on the germane. No, I don't. Uh, sorry, I decline to rule. So uh, all those in believe that this is a amendment is germane to item F11 can be considered. Please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? And the nays have it, and the amendment is not germane to the business before the assembly. So we probably have very little time left. We have about 40 seconds left. I have further debate on F11. So you want to amend it to replace 
film with dramatic performance. Dramatic presentation. Uh, okay, dramatic presentation. Uh, is there a second for that amendment? Second. Okay, moved and seconded to replace film with dramatic presentation. Uh, is there, we have the speech in favor of that. We already had one by the mover, I think. Is there a speech against that substitution? No, but who wants to speak further in favor of the student maker? Well, Mr. Uh,与上面的四个表现，上面的四个表现里面是包括了戏剧和电影等这个四个表现一个大类下的各个作品的。如果我们单纯的只对独立电影进行表彰的话，那么这个独立制作人制作的戏剧表现的其他类型的作品
Sure. Yeah. Uh, is that here? Thank you, Chair. I realise this is an unusual request, and I hate it when people disrupt the business meeting because of their personal bugbears. However, I'm afraid that um, yesterday's decision was not a was not taken in a good way, and it was not a good decision. It was not taken in a good way because, as the head of the Wisfus Division for next year's World Cup in Glasgow, um, I'm the person that is going to be the most affected by this, uh, by this change to the standing rules. Um, and I was not made aware of it. I was not consulted. I was not part of the debate. I did not see what was happening. Uh, in particular, um, we have been looking in Glasgow at uh, potential uh, creative changes to how the business meeting could be run. Uh, the passage of this amendment has made it very difficult for us to continue those discussions. It would be better to do these things in good faith um, rather than in bad faith. I would prefer that if it is, I don't know if this is possible in a motion for reconsideration, I would like to see, I would like to see, what is it when you what is it when you order? Microphone, uh, microphone. I believe he's speaking in favor of reconsideration, but what is it? I believe that claiming that an action was made in good faith or not in good faith is not appropriate in debate. Okay. I find the point of order well taken. I hear what you say. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, it seems to me that it would have been better to refer this to a subcommittee, and if it's possible to do that instead as part of the motion for consideration, I'd like to do that. If it's not, I would just like to have the, uh, the amendment overturned and reviewed properly next year. If the reconsideration is adopted, it would then be in order to move to refer this to our committee. Thank you. So, the Chair, I move for reconsideration. Yeah. That's the motion on the floor. Is there a speech against reconsideration? Dave McCarvey. Um, since the, uh, since the uh, putting it in the, the standing rules in that way actually didn't uh, change anything. These were already the rules. That, these were already the rules of the business meeting. Uh, it is not, in fact, any kind of change that uh, that any future year needed to be informed of because it was already the rules they were working under. Whether they were aware of that or not is not of any concern to this meeting. And another speech in favor of reconsideration. Hello, 已经说了我们的会议要依据最新版的罗伯特议事规则 最新版本目前已经是12版了 so I would say that although remote voting is not explicitly mentioned in our standing rules, I don't believe the standard uh, parliamentary authority we've adopted, Robert Rules of Order, says that it's not allowed unless your rule is specifically permitted. So the fact that our rules are silent on this point means that it's not permitted currently. Yeah. 
but that means that this is a change to our rules then. No, it's not. Well, it's not. Well. Right. Is it? Yeah. Nicholas White. I'm sorry, Chair, but you just said it wasn't an ordinance, it's an order, it's a means of standing order, and there you say it is an ordinance. Our rules, mentioned, our rules invoke Roberts. So in some sense, everything in Roberts is in our rules by, by reference. Is there, time, is there any time against the motion to reconsider? I don't think so. Only All right, in favor. Uh, any further speech in favor of reconsideration? No. Move to extend debate two minutes. Is there a second for the motion to extend debate? Seconded. Is there uh, any objection to extending debate for two minutes? Seeing no objection. Uh, I want to speak against. Any further speech against? Uh, <laughs> yep. Kevin Stanley. It may not be obvious, but the WISPAS Constitution says that our, our meetings are to be conducted under the, the bylaws, that is the Constitution, the standing rules, and the parliamentary authority, Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised. Thus, anything in Robert's that is not explicitly overruled by something in our standing rules or Constitution are incorporated by reference and our current parliamentary authority in its current edition does discuss remote participation but says you need to have rules that enumerate it and that I hope explains why our current practice is what it is. I can go into this in greater detail but it would be inappropriate to do so here on the floor. Is there a further speech in favor of reconsideration? Seeing none, of oh, good. Okay. Yes, I think this is your second speech. So. I, think it is. I, will, I, will, I will use the time as wisely as I can. I appreciate this. Um, I'm dismayed and disappointed by the, um, by the way in which what is and isn't in the Constitution is being represented here. As those who have spoken well know, individual world cons are free, in theory, to choose whatever parliamentary authority they like. It is convention that they choose Robert's rules of order, but that's not actually constitutionally mandated. What you're doing here is taking something that's even barely in Robert's rules of order and you're hardwiring it into the Whispers Constitution. Yes, by all means, Green. You've, you, you've won this one by sneakily moving through the rules because you know them better than me. I hope you feel proud of yourself. This Excuse is the kind me, of thing. Actually, this yeah, the kind I of thing. I'm a point of order against the word sneakily. Okay. This is the kind of thing that diminishes the reputation of the business meeting for those of us who try to engage with us in good faith. And I am disgusted. Thank you. Are there any further speeches on the motion to reconsider? Mr. Chairman, point of order. Yes. Boulder's Boulder motions that other members are not germane to this body. I would ask that Nicholas White be removed. Uh, I see. Uh, I didn't actually observe it myself, but uh, I guess. Does that Nicholas would... deny it? Nope. Apparently not. Uh, so I'm not too familiar with this kind of procedure because it hasn't occurred very often. No, I apologize, Steve. Uh, you may. Will that satisfy the second apology? My apologies. Okay, Mr. White has apologized and the apologies have been accepted. So, I believe we should proceed to a vote on the motion to reconsider, since nobody wishes to speak to it at this point. All those in favor of reconsidering, please raise your hand. Oh. Uh, three, four. There's no time. No, we're voting. No. We're voting. Eastlake's fine. Uh, use your hand or stand. Okay, thank you very much. Those opposed to reconsideration? Okay, the vote is uh, four in favor and six opposed. The motion is not reconsidered. No. Uh, next item of business is item F4. Uh, eligibility criterion for non-English works.
provides that the Wokong can, Kong Committee can establish a conversion ratio between the word count in a specific language and the number of English words. Nomination categories for written works shall be determined based on the converted English word count. Uh, the time limit was set for six minutes on this item of business. Um, do the makers wish to speak in favor or anybody else?我是口信人我翻译过五本长篇小说两本是科幻小说他们都在中国出版的都是从英语翻译成中文我能理解这个条款修改的目的不过我觉得那个某种语言字数和英文单词数的转换比例不需要固定的确定的特别固定因为它会
Uh, wait time has been set to eight minutes. Right, we have a speech in favor. We have a speech against. Do we have any speeches? Somebody wishes to speak. Mao Zedong. 我认为是否应该更改为播客收到了报酬才能够去除掉最佳粉丝播客的资格粉丝的博客就不该颁发给他 I think that's a speech in favor What this basically does is seems to me to be what you said that it removes uh, this allows uh, works from that category if they pay their contributors 但, um, 我认为是收报酬 但是我认为文字的表述有问题, oh, Further speeches on uh, item F5. Okay. 粉丝播客我有个诚信的请求请诸委会重新解释The difficulty is that the English version talks about the contributors being paid, 
whereas the Chinese version uh, talks about uh, the fan cast getting paid to basically uh, being a for for a for profit uh, enterprise, and so it's receiving money, uh, whereas opposed to paying contributors, you know, it could do both, of course, or neither. So we need to uh, resolve this ambiguity. Uh, Since this was originally proposed in Chinese, we plan to, to follow the Chinese version. So uh, what it will do is add a restriction uh, to the fan cast category that uh, if the fan cast uh, is an income producing, receives money, then it would no longer be eligible. I don't know if we need to figure out the exact wording, but uh, is that an adequate explanation for people? So the, the statement in the English agenda is incorrect. It's not about paid its contributors or staff monetarily, but rather received uh, monetary income uh, for the fan cast. Are there any questions? No questions.哦,我是發現好,我不得不再次陳述剛才產生的疑問,根據目前我們收到的中文文件中的意見,它的意思是 这意味着，根据英文版本而言，是粉丝播客是最终的获利方，而根据中文的话，粉丝播客不是最终获利方，即粉丝播客雇佣的其他团队或其他专业的个人是最终获利方。请我提醒，就大会主委会再次注意这一
this would create a new Hugo category for any person who has had one or more written works in the field of science fiction or fantasy appearing for the first time during the previous calendar year if the writer's age is between 15 and 24 when the works were published or appeared. Does anybody wish to uh, speak in favor uh, or again? In favor. Well, I will speak against it. Uh, my name is Carolina Gomez Lobula. And my reason is that the uh, Hugo Awards already has lots of categories. It's growing and growing, and I don't think that we need more categories. We have to be really um, careful to add more categories. But to be a, a new writer, we already have. I think it's the astounding category. And I don't think, even if I understand why why uh, this motion be put in, I don't think that we need another category that focus on age. Thank you. Uh, that was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor of adding this category? Thank uh, 我本人是高校社团代表三十岁向后的这些成熟的作家来说他们的协作的功底以及一些知识的储备是存在一些明显的劣势的所以我觉得余国奖应该为这些更有创造力的未来的这些科幻协作者提供一个更公平的参与到余国奖的一个机会首先我需要再次提出一个程序性的问题而根据目前的中文版本证明作品作者的作品需要进入到公共出版领域因此我提醒各位会注意这一点谢谢 I'm not sure that's a difference This does include the word published in the English version It says when the word was published, which presumably would apply to all the written works, or uh, appeared. Uh, further speeches? And, uh, missing, uh, uh, Jerry? Uh, you can come up to the podium or we'll get a bunch of them. Uh, 第一个理由是而且还要得到书号还要发表我觉得这个门槛太高了对于特别是在中国语境里面这个门槛太高那么在网络上出版算不算是出版和发表所以我觉得建议这两个理由我是持反对意见
。我同意新增最佳青年作家奖，因为青年这个群体是。呃，在每个国家，它可能对成年、未成年是有一个界定的，是可能不同的。但是青年在这个提案人的提议里，十五到二十四岁是一个想象力蓬勃的年龄，也是值得被关注的年龄。每个人都会走过这个年龄，而在这个时间段，刚才有一位老师提到说，啊，他们是未来科幻的萌芽状态，也是希望被看到的一个状态，所以。呃，为了鼓励这类人群，我们应该去新增这样的奖项，让更多的画迷看到他们。对，谢谢。Thank you. Is there a speech against this category? Mr. Chairman, you are welcome. I have not recognized you. Recognize the gentleman on the other side. 呃，主席您好，我我反对这个奖项，因为我觉得科幻最重要的是想象力，而青年呢应该有这个自信心，呃，你们应该是呃去更好的去呃利用自己的优势，呃，把作品写好，呃，在青年阶段，在作品还不成熟的时候就要拿到这个奖励，不见得是一个很好的鼓励，你这种鼓励可能会让你放弃更深入的呃思考，呃。所以我反对最佳青年作家奖，啊，如果是未成年的还可可以考虑一下，啊，完毕。Thank you. Is there a speech in favor? Any? Yes. Honorable Chair, in the matter of online publication, it is a pretty clear precedent existing right now with all other works. That ship has sailed, to use an English phrase. Online publication is publication. Otherwise, we wouldn't have many of the works that have actually been nominated or won Hugo Awards. <coughs> Nevertheless, I don't see why there should be a lower age limit on this categorization, and I therefore move to amend by striking out between 15 and 24 and inserting less than 25. Is there a second for this amendment? I see Alexia. Okay. And I gave my speech in favor. Uh, so it's been moved to strike out between 15 and 24 and insert less than 25. Is there a speech on favor of or against the amendment? We actually already have a speech in the paper. Is there a speech against the amendment? <coughs> the only effect of this amendment is to eliminate the lower age bound. Thank you. 每增长一岁，他的这个想象力，他的写作水平都可能会出现巨大的飞跃。在这种情况下，如果我们笼统的把成年人、未成年人、把儿童、青少年、大学生混合到一起去评选雨果奖，对于这一个奖项是非常不利的。我们可以想象，大学生拿着他这个非常具有文采的作品去和。六七岁孩子的作品去竞争，这是一个非常恶劣的现象，所以我不赞成取消年龄下限的做法。谢谢。Thank you. Is there a speech in favor of the amendment? Any further speech? Choose on either side. Yes. 
呃，主席先生您好，我是认为这一边更多的应该是注重，就是说不应该设置为最佳，因为最佳也就代表着可能只有一个或者两个。那么在这样的情况下，可能对于其他的青年科幻作家而言是一种打击，因为呃，在我的视视野里头，可能大家都是一样的主义或者一样的。I don't, excuse me, I don't think that's relevant to the amendment to change the age limit. So it sounds like you're speaking about the word best, which is a different question. We're just talking about whether or not to eliminate the lower age bound in favor of or against that change. Oh, I'm the one who's against it. Then, 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 我在想，能否把这个奖项更改为最佳处女作奖？因为我认为，因为、嗯、我我继续说我的观点，因为我认为，嗯，作家的年龄不应该被限制。嗯，如果说一个人他三十岁，反正时间结束。嗯 ，That doesn't seem relevant. I guess it's sort of in favor of losing the only one b o u n Are there any further speeches on the amendment to strike between 15 and 24 and replace it with less than 25? Those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed, please raise your hand. Uh, nine in favor, three against, so the amendment is adopted. And uh, it now reads, with the writer's age, less than 25. Uh, is there any further debate on F6 as amended? Recognize Ann Rudolph to speak against. I'm Anne Rudolph. I'm opposed to this uh, new category. I think that there are, I know personally of several young writer competitions in the U.S., just locally in the Maryland area, that recognize young writers. Um, I feel that a 20 or 22 or 24 year old can well be a professional writer and compete on the same stage as other professional writers and should be judged on that. If you put them into their own category, they would be ineligible in other categories, such as short story, novel, novella, and everything else. Younger writers have won mainstream Hugo categories. I don't think they should be segregated against. Thank you. Is there a speech in favor of F6 as amended? Seeing none, are there any further speeches in this paper party? I, uh, Dave McCarty, uh, I, I believe that a Hugo for Best Young Writer uh, would would create an unacceptable overlap with the Astounding Award, and I am therefore opposed to it. Are there any further speeches? We are actually 38 seconds over time for this session. Uh, seeing no further speeches, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of F6 as amended, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, the nays have it, and F6 is defeated. So we're now uh, actually a minute and seven seconds past the end of this session. So we are adjourned until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning in this room where we have the site selection uh, session. The first item of business will be the announcement of the winner for the 2025 World Science Fiction Convention. Then there'll be other site selection business, and then there'll be a recess. And after that recess, we will continue with the constitutional amendments and business that was deferred until tomorrow. So I prepare us to be adjourned.